And Paul says, if me eating meat is going to cause someone to stumble, even though I know it's okay to do it, I'll gladly give up my turkey dogs. Now, knowing the background provides a little bit of thrust here for you and me. It's this. My life is not to be lived simply for how it makes me feel, how it makes me grow, how it makes me uh, operate. And it's not even to be lived by the way it does that for my immediate family. I need to recognize I'm part of a larger community and what I do with my life, even the things that are okay, can sometimes have a negative effect on others. And I need to be sensitive to that. But the psalmist tells us to make our noise joyfully to the Lord. And, and part of that just nestled in there is serving him with gladness. Now, I don't know how many of you think about serving the Lord as being something that is noisy. And make a joyful noise entitles a lot, includes a lot more than simply serving the Lord. It includes uh, singing. But all of that is wrapped up in what we're doing for our God. And the psalmist continues, because, he says, for the Lord is a great God. He's the great king above all gods we might put in our life. Look, I've got five children and five grandchildren in the sense two are still in the womb, but I'm counting them. So I don't need to worry about whether or not God will be there for my children or my children's children or their children. I know the same faithful God is there for me and will be there for them. Verse, and it says, God speaking here, call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and hidden things that you haven't known. And I love the way those two passages marry up because I live in need of God answering my prayers. I live in need of God answering my questions. I live in need of God teaching me things that are greater than I would know otherwise, things that I wouldn't come across on my own that are hidden, things that I don't know. I need God's revelation. To be still means to just stop, take a moment, to know that he is God means not simply to be intellectually aware, but to be relationally aware. That word, Hebrew word for know is the same word that's used for sexual intimacy. It, it, it means an intimate awareness and relationship with. So I get an admonition to stop every day, take a deep breath, and think reflectively and relationally about the fact that my God reigns above this earth. Because of what God did for me in Christ, I am the new creation. I am the different person than I could have ever been otherwise. I am what I am because of what Christ did for me. We as believers in Christ are convinced our moral failures, our inability to measure up, our inadequacies are more than just a sickness. They're more than just a, a, a malady that's going to get better as we grow and mature. They're actually inherent and, and built into who we are as fallen people. But Christ has taken the responsibility, the accountability, the uh, all of, of the repercussions of our inadequacies upon himself as a perfect being. And that's what his death does. It takes all of our inadequacies or sins it takes all of our imperfections. It takes all of those ways that we have missed the, the, the purity of God. And it washes them away. 